So functional liver anatomy, we're really going to focus on microanatomy, although we'll talk about circulation, obviously, blood circulation and how it gets to the liver and what the liver is draining and then where the blood goes from the liver. So what we're going to focus on is a classic hepatic lobule, uh, and let's start there. So that's a hepatic lobule, and if you can imagine in the liver, these are large sort of sheets of these and then they're stacked upon one another. That was a terrible hepatic lobule. So now if you can imagine sheets and sheets of these, so these guys are in kind of two directions where they're next to one another and they're kind of stacked like pancakes. And at the center of all of these, there's a central vein, and that's where we, got the, where we get the term central lobular. So I'm gonna label this central vein. And then at what are called the portal areas, there on the periphery, each of those kind of six pointy spots, we have a branch of the hepatic artery. We're going to make him red. We have a branch of the portal vein. So of course the hepatic artery is bringing in oxygenated blood from the heart. The portal vein is draining kind of that entire intestinal area. Um, and so that's coming from the intestines and abdomen kind of in general, and that's portal vein, so not so oxygenated blood. So we're going to label that PV. We're going to label our artery HA. It's a branch of it anyway. And then the last thing that we have is a bile duct. Uh, and so that obviously is going to be a little bit different, and that's leaving the liver and going out. A few other things to talk about, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, is that there's different areas. Um, so if these are hepatic lobules, there's other terminology which we're not going to get into when we talk about liver microanatomy. But we are going to talk about a few things. So when we talk about the central lobular area, we're talking about hepatocytes that are around the central vein. So that's called central lobular. That's easy to remember. The other are called periportal hepatocytes, and of course that's around a portal triad. So right there's a portal triad, and the hepatocytes, so central lobular is going to be all of those hepatocytes surrounding the central vein. The periportal hepatocytes are aptly named because of course they're around here around the portal area. And then the mid area, those kind of in-between ones are called mid-zonal. Well, why does this matter? Why does this matter? And that's going to be what we talk about next, which is blood flow essentially getting to um, to the liver. Alright, so imagine you just cut a piece of the liver like you'd be cutting pie. Um, and you were kind of cutting from one of those, the triangle pointy areas. And so now our central vein is here, right? So there's our central vein, and here is our portal area, is right here. All right, so this is just one kind of, one-sixth of that pie that we're looking at. So that's one thing to notice. And now you can see all of these guys are hepatocytes, and so there's plates and plates and stacks of hepatocytes. And so all of these are interconnected because of their blood vessels. All right, so just repeating what I've already said. So this, this periportal area, which again is around the portal vein branch. So again, the portal vein branch is getting blood from the portal vein, which of course drains the abdomen and the GI tract. The hepatic artery branch, branch of hepatic artery coming oxy completely oxygenated blood. Those mix, right? So they're mixing here. So a couple things. These hepatocytes are, of course, called periportal hepatocytes. Um, and that's what's going to get blood first. So for some bacterial agents that might be in blood, for certainly neoplasias. So anything that's in the GI tract is going to go into the portal vein. So maybe there's big nasty blasties in here, and they're going to infiltrate first, right? Maybe there's wee little nasty bugs, bacteremia, that is going to get to the periportal hepatocytes first. So sure you get the most oxygen in your blood, but you also get all the bad stuff in your blood too. So those periportal hepatocytes get blood first. Blood flows down that way towards the central vein, nourishing all of these hepatocytes. So all of these hepatocytes are very lucky. Who's not so lucky? Well, those are the hepatocytes in the central lobular area, they get oxygen 
they get blood last, so they get oxygen last. What does that mean? If you have are severely volume depleted, but really if you have a really low PCV, so an animal that's very anemic, that can cause central lobular hepatocyte injury because these hepatocytes get blood last. So of course all of these hepatocytes are fed nutrients, right? And then they make products, so they make all those good things like albumin and everything else, and it's dumped into the sinusoids. And that, again, feeds in to, so the hepatocytes produce things, that feeds into the central vein, and that all goes into circulation, so that's a good thing. So this blown-up image on the right, you can see kind of the, the high mag view of it, where you have hepatocytes feeding into this sinusoid, and so they're, that's where they dump all of their yummy nutrients. All right, so let's talk about bioflow. So along with the liver making all sorts of important things, it also makes a lot of waste products. So these are made by hepatocytes, and they essentially need a way to get the waste out. What are waste products? Well, bilirubin's a waste product. Bile acids are actually a waste product. It includes um, a variety of things, including cholesterol. And so all of this goes into bile. And so these hepatocytes, I'm still in the close-up view, make these waste products. And it goes into these areas in between. Let's make that green, actually. It goes into these areas in between hepatocytes called bile canaliculi. And then those feed into larger, this larger bile canaliculi here. So it goes in between the hepatocytes. There's a little area for it to get dumped into. And then it goes into these larger bile canaliculi. And then it feeds this way. So that goes the opposite way. And it empties into the bile duct. And then that becomes larger bile ductules. And eventually it goes into our common bile duct, which then goes into our intestine. So why does that matter? Well, that matters because you can actually have blockages of your bile canaliculi, which on um, our stain anyway look black, and those are called bile casts or bile thrombi. Why might these get blocked? Well, a few things, and I'll tell you more about this later. One, hepatocytes can swell. Um, that can happen. You can have infiltrative neoplasia coming in in the periportal area, remember? So let's say big nasty blasties came in and they start taking over your liver. They can block your bile duct and that's called cholestasis. Other things that can happen is you can get periportal fibrosis, um, which essentially means tons of fibrosis around this area. And the bile duct itself is a very low pressure system, meaning it easily collapses. So it goes from being that nice fat guy to this closed off skinny guy, and it collapses and bile can't get out. And that's what's called cholestasis, and we'll talk more about that um, and how that all happens soon.